Welcome to Reno Viola in depth, the show that discusses in depth the winning strategies of great tournament champions and the industry that supports fishing. Our host, internationally known television and radio personality and Canadian Sports Fishing Hall of Famer Reno Viola is no stranger to the tournament trail himself and knows what it takes to win. And now, here he is, your host, award-winning Reno Viola. Hey everybody, Reno Viola here. I've had a chance to fish all over the globe, but when folks ask me where the best smallmouth bass fishing is, my answer has always been right here on the St. Lawrence River in Cornwall, Ontario. Simply put, there's nothing like it on earth. So whether you're looking for a guided trip or just a day on the water with your own boat, go to renoviolaoutdoors.com and send me an email, and I'll have someone from Team Cornwall send you the info. I guarantee you a great fishing day. Hey, and welcome to the show. My name is Reno Viola. The name of the program is In Depth with Reno Viola, and today I've got two, not just one, but I've got two very special uh, guests with me. One is Jerry Olette, the uh, critic for the Conservative government in Canada for Aboriginal Affairs, but more importantly, he used to be the ex-Minister of Natural Resources, so he knows what he's talking about. And the other guest is Sean Rickard. Uh, you probably remember his name from Urban Outdoor Adventures, a tele great television show that was around a few years ago. And, of course, he went on to do other great things within the fishing industry, including creating a uh, communication board on the Internet on LinkedIn called Recreational Fishing Industry Professionals. If you folks are not part of that, you really do need to be part of that to be informed. But before we get started with them, I want to remind you that In Depth with Reno Viola is brought to you by Golden Anchor Marina in downtown Hawkesbury, home of Princecraft Boats and Mercury Outboards in eastern Ontario. Brought to you by the town of Hawkesbury, where they take fishing the Ottawa River very, very seriously. It's also brought to you by my favorite, TD Canada Trust, the mobile mortgage division and specialist. Call me and I will personally tell you who the best specialist in your area is and save you some money on your next mortgage or refinance. Of course, it's brought to you by the town of Cornwall at choosecornwall.ca uh, on the St. Lawrence River, a world-class smallmouth bass fishery, and my favorite boat in the whole wide world, Princecraft Boats. The more you know about boats, the better Princecraft looks. And you know what? They dominate the water. So this summer, get in a Princecraft, have a test drive, and I will bet you that the next boat you buy will definitely be one of their boats. So, Okay, I'm Reno Viola, and I am pissed off. I really can't hold this anymore. And I've got my trusty alarm going. Let me tell you what that alarm stands for. Next time you guys go to a voting booth, and we're going to go pretty soon. We're going to go to a voting booth. Here's, here's the chance for you who made the mistake last time and voted in the, the, the current government. Here's a chance to be creative and vote somebody that you can actually live with. And you've got choices. It's not just the conservatives. It's not just the NDP. You've got choices. But anything other than liberal, these idiots at the helm don't know what they're doing. And the ex-premier, the guy who, 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 who took all of your money and is costing us billions of dollars in penalties and taxes and, and stupidities, said the other day that he, his office had no way of knowing how much those gas plants were going to be to shut off. And I say bull crap. And the only way you're going to stop this, folks, is at the voting booth next time. So remember that. But for now, I have a topic that's near and dear to my heart. I spend a lot of time on the water, as you know. And every once in a while, I get some irate kook coming running down, some of them with uh, uh, pellet guns, some of them with squirt guns, some of them with buckets of water, some of them with whatever you've got, stones I've, had, I've been throwing stones at, saying, get off of my dock, this is my water, you can't fish my water. And I say, crap. We have uh, acts, we have acts within our constitution, our laws, that actually protects us, protect us from idiots like that, and spell out in plain English that we have every right to fish that water. That act is called the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act, and specifically, just a very short little paragraph, section 13, spells it all out that they cannot interfere with us. And we'll get into it as we go. But let's bring in our guest. My, my first guest is Jerry Olette, the, the ex-Minister of Natural Resources for the Conservative Government and the current critic for Aboriginal Indian Affairs. Uh, Jerry, welcome to the show. Always a pleasure. It's uh, great to be on the air. Well, you know what? It's great that you take the time to do it, to be with us. Uh, my other guest is Sean Rickard. Of course, he was the host and creator of uh, Urban Outdoor Adventures, 
that uh, was a very popular television show a few years ago and he decided to do a couple different things but one of the most important and creative things that he did was create a, a communication board on LinkedIn called Recreational Fishing Industry Professionals and folks you need to be part of that and it's free to join if you want to be kept informed of what's going on and also be kept informed of Sean's opinion you need to be part of that board so welcome to the show Sean. Thank you, Reno. It's a pleasure to be on the show, mate. Thanks for calling me in. No problem at all. So I read that, that your latest um, posting, if you will, I guess yesterday, and where you bring up the ugly story, and you know what, last year when I read it, I, I didn't pay much attention to it, but obviously it's happened again. And, and the ugly story, folks, is this. For those of you familiar with the Scarborough Bluffs, very nice marina area. It's one of the nicest ones in southern Ontario, certainly in the Toronto area. Very welcoming, very beautiful, very pristine, and it's ours. It's part, it's our, our tax dollars pay for everything around the outside of that thing. It's ours, the water is ours, the ground is ours, everything is ours. So Sean was fishing, and as, as Lake Ontario sometimes gets snotty, he started coming into the marina and started fishing in the marina. Sean. Rather than me explain it, tell us a story from last year first. Yeah, I think that's uh, probably a good place to start. I mean, this whole um, this whole situation and, and this scenario has been going on for many years now. You know, you get the odd comment from uh, marina staff and the manager there, um, you know, telling you that uh, it's illegal to fish in there, there's no fishing, and... Uh, you know, you get into a bit of a back and forth with them. But last year, I was in there. I was actually guiding at the time. I have a, a guide service, Euro Canadian Outfitters, and um, I was in there with some clients. It was actually a mother and father from Ohio and their thirteen-year-old son, and uh, we were hey, making shut, shut, a. Hang on, just hold there for a second. So, folks, get the picture here. Okay, these are American guests of Sean, who are coming into the uh, our homeland, Ontario. Let's not, you know, forget Canada. We're talking about Terry because this is where we live. Coming into our homeland to bring tourism dollars into our hometown to be entertained. And here comes an idiot on the dock. Sorry, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, it really is quite crazy. And, uh, and obviously this individual was, uh, was a few bricks short of a load and a little bit deranged, I think. But... Uh, Anyway, we, we were making our way down through the channel. We don't generally go into the docks too much. Um, we fish the main channel there. There's a whole slew of bays that we fish in and around Toronto, and Scarborough Bluffs just being one of them. Like you said, when it gets a bit snotty, we'll pop in there and fish for pike for a bit. And uh, you can get some good fish in there from time to time. So we're making our way down through. We're, you know, we're casting, and uh, I, I'm always very cautious to uh, to advise the guests, you know, not to cast towards the boats. Um you know, so that we don't cause any damage or annoy anybody. If there's people on the boats, we generally try and avoid uh, those areas. Anyway, we're making our way down to the gas dock, and uh, an employee of the Bluffers Park Marina came out. Um, you can always tell they wear the red T-shirts down there. And um, basically told me that I need to leave. And I said, um, and why is that? And uh, his response was, uh, well, it's illegal to fish in here. We don't allow it. And uh, you need to leave right away. And I said, well... We're going to carry on, and, you know, I suggest you carry on with your day, and we won't bother you if you don't bother us. And uh, the guy got a little bit irate and said, listen, if you don't get out of here, I'm, I'm basically going to get a boat and ram you out of here. So uh, I thought he was kidding, you know, just an idle threat. But, uh, no, he, he ran off down the dock and jumped in their little red tugboat down there that has, like, a ram bar on the front and uh, came out after me. And uh, I, at that point, I, I figured he was serious and he was coming right at us. So I advised my guests to sit down. Um, and uh, it's funny, actually, because the, the, the father was actually videotaping, but he got so frightened, he turned the video camera off. And I wish he'd, uh, you know, I wish he'd catch, he kept filming. But... <laughs> so the guy came over to the boat, and uh, he's yelling at me, and I'm yelling at him, and I'm telling him, listen, back off, or I'm coming aboard, and I'm shutting you down. And uh, it, it got a little ugly, and he got pretty close to the boat, and eventually with my loud yelling and the fact that when he got up to the side of the boat he realized I'm 6'6", six, six. Uh, I think he decided, you know, and thought twice about his actions and he actually, long story short, sort of backed off. And uh, But the bottom line was he was he was physically threatening us and uh, putting, you know, potentially putting uh, my guests in danger. So I uh, immediately got on the phone and called the Toronto Police Marine Unit and 
we kind of hung around uh, until they got there. It took them about half an hour to get down from Toronto oh, Harbour. So, so they actually came down? They did come down, yeah. Well, I phoned because they, they said they were going to phone the police. I said, well, don't, don't bother. I'm phoning them right now. So, okay. so I called the Marine unit rather than get into a physical, um, you know, confrontation with them. I decided I'd call the police and let them deal with it because I know that, you know, with the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act, as you said, in Section 13, it, it, it supposedly protects us against uh, being harassed by, by individuals. Okay, um, so hang in there. Hang on for a second. Let's, let's bring Jerry in on this. So, Jerry, so, so, we, so obviously you deal with all your, I'm going to put quotation marks around here, all your friends at Parliament every day of, of your life, because that's what, you're a career politician, you've been doing it all your life, you do it well, you're very intelligent, I know you don't, you, you know just when to say what so you don't get people pissed off, I, I get that. Uh, but there's a bunch of people in there that yeah. don't want to listen to guys like Sean or anybody else that wants to complain about these laws that we have, and specifically this one here is the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act, Section 13. Yep. Fill us in a little bit about what goes on. Uh, okay, well, a couple things. Uh, Bill 139, the Fish and Wildlife Act, is a compilation of a number of bills that, that bring together all the Fish and Wildlife Act brings together all the bills that pertain to the Fish and Wildlife. So uh, Chris Hodgson brought in Bill 139, that specifically states it was against the law to harass anybody uh, legally hunting and fishing out there in the province of Ontario. And uh, then there was, uh, I brought in when I was Minister Bill 235, which uh, is the uh, legal right to hunt and fish in the province of Ontario um, in accordance with the law. And so effectively what's happening here is, is um, obviously some individuals feel protective of what they think is their own domain or dom their own property rights where that doesn't fall into play at all. Um, I had similar situations like this in the past, and the first thing I asked the individuals, are you an agent or an officer of the law? Of course, they're going to say no. And I said, well, the first thing then you do better do is call the cops and don't get confrontational because if you want to deal with this, we can deal with it one way you can call or I can call because you obviously don't know what you're talking about. As soon as uh, you put the onus on them to start thinking, sitting back and realize, they have no authority as an individual just coming forward in acting in that manner. Then they start to back off a bit, and what normally happens is uh, if the police will show up, in some cases they don't, um, then they will uh, come forward. And I know in other situations where the individuals who called the, the police, for example, somebody called the cops because they, were, they said they were not hunting or fishing legally when completely they were. Those individuals called the cops on a false basis and then the police went to them and said, listen, they're in complete compliance, and you're the one in breach of the law, and if you do this again, you're the one who will be charged. And so that had a tendency for them to back off and stop what they were doing. But it's happening quite a bit all over the province. Folks, let me read it to you. It's just a very short section. I mean, the law, the, the, the actual, the, 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 the act is quite long, but the, the section 13, uh, maybe four sentences. It goes, a person shall not interfere with lawful hunting, trapping, or fishing by a tampering with tarps, nat nets, baits, firearms, or any other thing used for hunting, trapping, or fishing. B, yep. placing himself or herself in a position for the purpose of interfering that hinders or prevents hunting, trapping, or fishing. Or C, engaging in an activity for the purpose of interfering that disturbs or is likely to disturb wildlife or fish. Which is, yes. that's it, that's the whole thing. It's actually... See, this, is, this is where I'm a little bit confused, you know, cause I, and, and just going back to what you were saying, Jerry, uh, with regard to, you know, I, I've, I've tried all that with these people, and this is, like I said, this has been going on for years. Last year was the sort of the straw that broke the donkey's back as far as me saying, you know what, enough's enough. Uh, right. You know, when it gets past the back and forth uh, sort of verbal disagreements to, to actually physically trying to assault somebody or potentially injure them, then, then that was enough for me. And, and what happened was, and, and what's happened since, because uh, it just happened again recently this weekend, is that I've called the police, I've contacted the MNR, and the, my frustration and, and confusion over this whole situation with this act being in place to protect me is that nobody is willing to enforce it. 
Um, I went to the MNR um, and, and spoke with them, and they said that they don't see it as a legal matter. I called the police down there, and they basically told me that, you know, I need to cool my jets and, you know, maybe stay out of the area. And I'm like, hang on a minute. Why, why, why would I... And then you get those posts on, you know, on Facebook and various places that I posted the story where people say, well, if, if, if they don't want you there, why are you going there? Well, the bottom line is I'm allowed to be there. I'm fishing, um, you know, even under the Navigable Waterways Act, I'm legally allowed to be fishing there. They don't yeah. own the water. They don't own the land under the water, as far as I know. Um, we're certainly not anchored anyway. We're on a trolling motor, and we're very careful and very courteous to anybody that comes through. If boats come through, we move out of the way. We're not causing a problem, and yet the police or the MNR or anybody who, who, as far as I've been told, are the ones that are supposed to be enforcing these laws, don't want anything to do with it. And yeah. when, when, you, when you come back to the marina employees and the manager and you tell them, listen, under the Navigable Waters Act, and you quote the, uh, the Fish and, um, uh, the, the Fish and uh, Wildlife Conservation Act, um, they basically say, we don't care, get out, or we'll get you out. And yeah. they're just simply not intimidated by it, and I think it's purely because of the fact that they know nobody is going to do anything about their, you know, nobody's, there's no uh, accountability for their actions. So how does, a, how does a government, Jerry, back up their laws that exist? Well, a couple things that, you know, what's happening here is that um, some may know before I do what I do now as an elected official, I used to work in the industry, and I can recall one time I was out with the Pickering Rod and Gun Club, and uh, all of a sudden uh, we got surrounded by, like, six cruisers. And it was their annual Boxing Day fox hunt. And I'd always uh, done something a little bit different. Um, they they showed up, and they said, what are you guys doing here? And I said, well, we're, we're fox hunting. And they said, well, you're not allowed to, to hunt here. And I said, yes, we are, and as a matter of fact, we are. And, and they went into a long, lengthy process and saying, well, you're not allowed to hunt, and uh, the season's closed. And, and I said, uh, no, as a matter of fact, it's not. And I started pulling things out of my pocket, and I said, here's the bylaw that allows us to hunt here. And as a matter of fact, here is the regulations that shows that uh, fox hunting is open in southern Ontario all year long. And uh, so all of a sudden, the officer went to, and uh, he went to the side, and he called in. He said, Sarge, they got all these bylaws here. Um and uh, they, uh, they've got the regulations here. Do you know anything about bylaws such and such and such and on and on and on? And anyway, the end result was, uh, Reno and Sean, is what I did was, this was before I became elected, I coordinated a in-service training program for the Durham Regional Police Force at that time. Okay. And the reason was because although they have every legal authority to enforce the Fish and Game Act, they don't have any training to do so. So they don't know any of the laws when they get called up on these sort of things. So the right. first thing that I did was I informed them about all these things on how it happens now. Since then, the deputy chief who was Doug Bullock at the time that I worked with has since retired, and there's been, to my knowledge, no follow-up on that in any way, shape, or form. But what, so the uh, only real ones who are trained are the COs right now in a lot of that area. Yeah, but the, 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 the ministry have no resources or, or whatever you want to call them is absolutely useless in, in this government and, and uh, uh, has been for the last, uh, whatever, six or seven years and continues to be. They have a basically a snot-nosed kid that's still wet behind the ears that probably doesn't even know how to spell Minister of Natural Resources that is the Minister of Natural Resources. I just, I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. If, if somebody took the damn time, okay, to... Well, here, if I'm speeding down a road and I'm doing 150... I can't use the excuse of, hey, I didn't know. Yep. I was supposed to know. Yep. And I'm going to get a fine. I'm going to get a ticket. So these idiots, and I'm going to call them idiots, and I don't normally call people idiots, but these idiots are who are supposed to be upholding our law and making sure that, that everybody in life uh, goes through life smoothly, if, if you will, they're not up on all the crap that's written on these pieces of paper. I, it basically, is that it? Is that what I should be understanding? Well, the, isn't it's, the requirement to have a fishing license or hunting license part of the same act? Um, you, know, that, you know, it's all part and parcel of the same act with, with, with regard to, if, if you don't have one, they're going to enforce it. So why, if, if I'm getting harassed and, and literally, physically 
uh, attacked almost by by a by a, an organization, not even an individual, but by a, a big marina. Why is nobody willing to to intervene and, and at least go and talk to those people and say, "Listen, here's the law. Stop it. That's enough." Yeah. Hey guys, let's take a, sub a sh very short break, and when we come back, we'll see if we can't figure out a solution. They say that giant muskie is the fish of a thousand casts. Well, that's wrong. Hi everybody, I'm Reno Viola, and I'm here to tell you that the folks who made that thousand cast comment are dead wrong. The only thing you need to do is come to the Ottawa River in Hawkesbury, Ontario, and have John Anderson from the Ottawa River Muskie Factory, or me, show you how easy it can be. Yes, the chances of getting a 50-incher are real. Simply go to hawksbury.ca and look for the fishing link. That's hawksbury.ca, and I'll hook you up. Princecraft, a six-decade leader in aluminum boats, has always distinguished itself with its reliability, performance,